as much as you can. This is going to be the most space on our tour. The key words in that are most space. Again, fill in the space as much as you can. I can also have some friends up here on the ramp. All right, folks, welcome to the Petty Officer's Quarters. Here at the Museum of Science and Industry, we've made a few accommodations for you guys. So the first thing being is that we have lowered the floors. Currently, I am sitting up above the original height of the boat, and as you can see, if I were to stand up straight, which is a rarity in my life, my head is already almost touching the pipes. For context, I am 5'10". Another thing, too, is that I closed a makeshift door. That is not how the German sailors would have entered. They would have entered through the top three hatches that are along the top of the boat. There is one in the galley control room, and there's another one over in the diesel, and, or not diesel engine room, or yes, the diesel engine room, my bad. Um, there would have been bunks on both sides of the boat, and lastly, they would have entered through all the rooms through circular hatches. Speaking of circular hatches, there's one right there. That room is what's called the forward torpedo room. That is where the lower ranking men would have slept. Yes, they would have slept with the, with the torpedoes under them. Yes, that is a real torpedo. No, it is not going to go off, I can assure you, because I was in the room when they were doing maintenance on it. Um, they would have practiced what's called hot bunking. Hot bunking means that one man who is out on assignment will go ahead and do what he was assigned, while the next man is sleeping, trying to gain energy for his next assignment. Once he's awake, once he's done with assignment, they would switch. 59 men, 35 bunks. Needless to say, you will be sleeping on a hot and sweaty bunk here on U505. It will get as hot as 90 to 100 degrees on board. Um, there were some perks, however. Currently, we are vibing out to what is called French dance hall music. It was banned in mainland Germany at the time, but allowed here on U505. Because we're in the middle of the ocean, we can get away with a couple of things. There are also were hand carved cards, as well as hand carved playing cards as well, or dice as well. Needless to say, while they were out on sea for those three ish years, they successfully sunk eight supply ships, so you could definitely say they had a lot of downtime on their hands. However, a day of action would have looked like this. If someone were to have spot a supply ship, they would go ahead and notify the captain, and the captain in this case would go ahead and ring what is called a dive bell. It will get loud and it will get dark for roughly three minutes. So what is happening in this situation? The dive bell is going off, and then the ballast tanks will go ahead and open up using these circular gears that are along the wall. Where is that gap was within the ship on our way in? Those are what's called the ballast tanks. Those will go ahead and fill up with any open ocean water so that way the boat can comfortably sink. After that, the captain and his crew with a pencil and paper, no calculator, they will go ahead and determine the speed of the torpedo as well as physically maneuvering the boat so that way they can acquire their target. would be cramped 
Down here are going to be the electrical batteries that I mentioned earlier. Also keep in mind there will be a tour in front of us as well as behind us. So as I say to my students, move like a zesty pepper with purpose. Once you guys are done taking photos and all that jazz, watch your head, watch your step, follow me over to the control room. Yeah, I was made in the average height of a German sailor, not Taurus. I would say five, five to like maybe five, eight, five, ten. Again, fill in the space as much as you can. I can have some friends over here. Again, keep filling in, keep filling in. If I can fit a full tour of 14 grown people in here, I can definitely fit all of y'all in here. All right, folks, welcome to the control room. This is the point of our tour where we will talk about the capture of the boat. As I stated earlier, this boat in particular was captured on June 4th, 1944 by Captain Daniel Gallery with his Hunter Killer Task Group 22.3. It was on a day that someone had spotted an enemy warcraft, that enemy warcraft being Captain Gallery's ship. And in this case, he had to issue what is called a crash dive. It will get loud and it will get dark for roughly six minutes. So what is happening in this situation? The same dive bell is going off, except it's going off at different paces, so that way the sailors know that a different situation is happening. After that, the same ballast tanks are opening up, so that way they can allow the open ocean water to come in. However, a few differences in this case. Any men who are not on assignment will be sent to the most forward part of the boat, literally dog piling on top of each other so that way they can sink the boat less than 37 seconds. After that, the lights have dimmed so that way we can conserve electricity. And then those same men who were sent to the most far forward part of the boat were then sent to bed so that way they can reduce sound as well as oxygen. Currently in this situation, we are running on stealth mode or running on silence mode in this case. Sound is very important when we are in this type of situation because it travels quicker underwater versus on land. So anything from my current talking volume or if my walkie were to go off, that sound will travel a lot quicker underwater versus on land. Currently the pinging we are hearing, it's what's called active sonar. Um, that is like a form of echolocation for ships. So the louder and closer the pings are, or vice versa, that will determine whether or not if a ship is closer or further away from another ship. Keep in mind, the German sailors who were sent to bed are currently listening to the active sonar. With that being said, how do you think they felt at this time? Yeah, like asleep. Correct. Don't get me wrong, I love sleeping to ambiance. I like hearing the froggies and the rain and all that jazz. That's because I know I'm in the safety of my own home. This was a real event that took place. The German sailors knew that there was a 50-50 shot of it being nothing or of it being something. Currently, the boat is at 300, 500 feet within the ocean. I call that a comfortable depth. Um, so that means that we are also hearing the groans of the water pressure hitting the sides of the boat. If it were to sink at, say, 755 feet, it would definitely crush like a tin tin in here. On top of everything I just said, the German sailors also could have heard splashes, which meant a depth charge or an underwater explosion in this case. If they heard splashes, that only meant that they could hold on to something and hope for the best. issued not one but two depth charges towards the U-505 and then caused the rudders to jam and now the boat is going in a deathward spiral going further and further within the ocean. 
Now Captain Longer realized he could have this situation play out in two different ways. He could either have option A, where the whole boat with himself, the crew, the supplies, everything sink to the bottom of the ocean. But he went with option B because the museum has his boat and he decided to have the boat surface and then he communicated with the sailors to scuttle the boat or have the boat surface in this case. However, you may or may not have seen these on your way in today. Uh, but once the boat was surfaced, they were unwelcomed with six minutes of uninterrupted gunfire. Those same gunshot holes can be seen on the other side of the boat, more toward the top. Those are real. Those are not tiny. Now, unfortunately, one sailor did die, and Captain Longo was severely injured to the point for the rest of his life he had to walk with a cane. He then told his sailors to abandon ship. While they were abandoning ship, they had opened up the sea strainer, which on my way, on our way to the next room, I will go ahead and point that out. This is allowing even more open ocean water to come inside the boat, trying to sink it even faster. Now the German sailors are abandoning ship. The Allied forces are now in. Literally and figuratively, they are going in blind. None of them knew what the inside mechanics of even a German submarine looked like. Maybe Captain Gallery? Either way, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. They also didn't know that the boat could potentially sink because at this point, open ocean water is everywhere, or B, potential explosives were also around the boat and the boat could explode. Now friends, we are done with lights, sounds, and all that jazz, so congratulations, you made it. Um, we're gonna make our way from here over to the electric motor room. Um, we will be passing through the diesel engine room where yes, it will smell like burnt crayons because that's the engine still airing out till this day. I'm going to shimmy my way over to this way. Um, also, keep your phones very close to you. This is the point of our tour where a lot of phones tend to get lost, so please hold on to them very closely. And again, fill in space as much as you can. This is going to be the last tight room and the last room within our tour. All right, friends, welcome to the electric motor room. At this point in our story, the German sailors have fully abandoned ship and the Allied forces are now in. Now, keep in mind, it's still very much dark. It's still very much spiraling. Also, the rudders are still jammed while we're at it. So Captain Gallery knew that he had to get to what is called the manual steering control so that way they can literally manpower the boat back up to safety. So him and a couple of other volunteers stayed behind so that way they can get there. Those manual steering controls are behind this closed hatch. Now, Captain Gallery knew that a closed hatch meant a bad hatch. So, he knew he had to brace himself for the worst. Either A, explosives could just be laced around the um, entryway and it could explode. Or B, more ocean water could just flood this place even faster. And he knew how to brace himself for the worst. So he went ahead and opened it. Everything was fine. Nothing happened. Maybe like minor flooding, but either way, nothing too drastic. If we were to look all the way down there, those are going to be where the manual steering controls are at, so that way they can literally manpower the boat back up to safety. It is also to note that one of the sailors from Captain Gallery's crew also noticed that the sea strainer was open and he was able to successfully close it so that way no more ocean water can come in. So at this point in our story, the boat has been brought back up to safety. Two sidebars. So the first one being is that I'm going to turn off the lights again real quick. The sailors um, in that situation that we were talking about earlier with the capture, they had to navigate their way throughout the boat, meaning half of this is from us, half of this is OG. The pipes were laced with radon. This is glow-to-dark paint from us. However, if I were to come down, and if I shine this in your face, I do apologize. That is OG. That is original. So that way the German sailors can see um, where the dials are at specifically. Because if I were to turn that off, they would have no idea what's going on. You can also see it within the inside of the door. It's more inside here as well as the outside of the door as well. Um, another thing I like to point out, which is my second favorite thing, my first thing being the bullet holes, um, is the lion's head. That is the insignia or the symbol in this case for the first two captains. 
the first captain had the lion's head and the hatchet. Second captain had the lion's head for whatever reason, long with the side of the seashell. Still trying to figure that out. And now, folks, you are more than welcome to stand where I'm currently standing at at the moment. But um, I'm going to say this once, and I'm going to say it once only. Please don't go inside. Don't physically go inside. Don't get me wrong. It's tempting. I know. I want to go away. But these are the original floors, meaning that they house either torpedoes and or possibly food under it. So now the floors are very unstable to not being able to withhold our weight. So you're more than welcome. Take a look, see If you were to look to the left to where the checkered floor is at, that's one of two bathrooms that were on board. We definitely took out the toilet. Definitely took out the toilet. Don't get me wrong. I want to see what a um, cleaning system in the bathroom looks like on board the U505. I would rather smell the burnt crayons than whatever remnants were inside that toilet. With that being said, once you guys are done, you can go ahead and uh, make your way to the bottom of the stairs where we can answer the question of how we got this boat, as well as what happened to both Captain Longo's crew and Captain Gallery's crew.